Hey, I'm Marcus, and we're going to have a look at the new Raspberry Pi 5. Let's do a quick comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. You can see that there's been some movement of ports and some additional connectors on the board. The bottom looks similar, but you can see wherever they have through hole components, the soldering looks a lot smoother. You can see this best with the 40 pin header. We'll zoom in now. It's a lot smoother because of a manufacturing process called intrusive flow. Of course, the biggest change is the system on the chip between the BCM2711 and the 2712. It's a quad-core ARM Cortex-74 running at 2.4 GHz. We're seeing a 2 to 3 times performance increase on the Raspberry Pi 5 over the 4. At launch, we're going to see variants of 4 GB and 8 GB memory density. The Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Gigabit Ethernet all stay the same. But on the 5, we've got this great new PCIe 2.0 interface. This means we're going to soon be able to connect SSDs via hats to the Raspberry Pi. And whilst the USB ports look similar, they now support 5 gigabits per second operation simultaneously on both ports. And again, the USB ports have swapped position with the Ethernet port. And the 5, just like the 4, has a GPIO header and two HDMI ports. But unlike the 4, we now have two MIPI connectors, so that means we can connect two cameras or two displays to the Raspberry Pi 5. Unfortunately, they've axed the analog audio and video jack, but it's possible to get audio out of the GPIOs if you add a filter to them. Micro SD now has twice the interface speed using SDR104 mode, and this is really a quality of life improvement. They're launching a new USB-C PD enabled power supply. You can still use your old power supply, but you just can't overload all your USB ports with power hungry devices. Continuing the theme of power, there will be now a new PoE hat, and it will be 802.3 AT compliant. And this new hat will fit into the official case and the PoE pin placement has changed. There will be now a dedicated RTC battery and battery connector, and the Pi 5 will be able to keep time after losing power. There's now a push button on the Raspberry Pi 5, which we never had on the 4, and this is going to allow us to do safe power down. Let's have a look at the various parts on the Raspberry Pi 5. We now have a memory density indicator on the Pi 5. It is a resistor that is placed at time of manufacturing, and yes, it's a functional component. We now have the BCM2712, and it's a speed improvement of two to three times. New to the Pi 5 is a PCIe connector, and this is going to allow us to connect SSDs. We now have a push button that connects to the memory management IC, and it can put your Pi in a low power mode. This is the custom designed power management IC. It's I2C controlled, it's got three LDOs, and it enables our RTC with battery backup. We now have heatsink mounting holes on the Pi 5. And these are used for the new active cooler accessory. Between the USB power connector and one of the HDMI ports, you'll see the new RTC battery connector. Again, connecting to that power management IC. We now have a UART connector that can be used with a debug probe to get a console on the Raspberry Pi. And we now have the RP1 Southbridge IO controller. We'll go into this a little bit more later. This is the PWM fan connector. Its immediate use is for the active cooler. And of course, we've got our ethernet and USB ports. The two USB 3.0 ports can now simultaneously run at 5 gigabits per second. And the position of the PoE hat connector has changed. It is now down here behind the Ethernet jack. We now have two MIPI connectors. This means we can connect up to two cameras to the Raspberry Pi at once. This will require a new flex cable. And that's the Raspberry Pi 5. This is the RP1, and it's the first silicon developed in-house by Raspberry Pi for use on one of their full-sized computers, and it provides the majority of their I.O. capabilities for the Raspberry Pi 5. They made the RP1 to reduce cost. They found they could save money by moving the I.O. into the separate south bridge. So what I.O. does it do? Well, pretty much all of it. It's got a four-lane PCIe 2.0 endpoint, gigabit Ethernet Mac, two USB 3.0 controllers, each one with one USB 3.0 and one USB 2.0 port, and it gives us more than double the usable bandwidth of the Pi 4. It's got SDIO ports, MIPI transceivers, video DAC, and all the low speed peripherals. Delta Sigma PWM audio out, 
and the package size is 12 by 12 millimeters with a 0.65 millimeter pitch. And that's the RP1. Don't forget to like and subscribe and mash that bell to get alerted about new news about the new Raspberry Pi 5.